a guy named Reggie Wood had a, a press conference with Malcolm X's daughters and the civil rights attorneys uh, and a couple of uh, three uh, civil rights attorneys. Reggie Wood's cousin, Ray Wood, was an undercover New York City police officer. Ray Wood got stomach cancer in 2011. And when he did, he revealed to his family that the NYPD and FBI worked with him to make sure that the two men who were in charge of Malcolm X's security detail were arrested days before Malcolm X gave a speech at the Audubon Ballroom in New York City. That is where Malcolm X was a, a shot and killed. And he wrote a letter that he asked Reggie Wood not to release until he died. He died in November of 2020. He wrote in that letter, for 10 years, I've carried this confession secretly in fear of what would happen to my, oh, no, I'm sorry. Reggie Wood said at the thing that he has carried the secret for 10 years. Um, Ray Wood obviously carried that secret for 55 years or so. Yeah. And apparently, according to his letter in 1965, Wood's uh, New York City Police Department supervises Supervisors instructed him to devise a plot to bomb the Statue of Liberty and to get two of these guys from Malcolm X's security detail to buy into it. Meanwhile, these guys, uh, Khalil Syed and Walter Bowie, they were, um, I may be mispronouncing their names, they uh, were arrested because of their participation in that plot. He wrote in his letter, it was my assignment to draw the two men into a felonious federal crime so that they could be arrested by the FBI and kept away. So it had to be a, a federal crime arrested by the FBI and kept away from managing Malcolm X's Audubon ballroom door security. And when um, these two guys said and bow were arrested in connection with the plot, this is just days before, five days before the speech, Bow had testified at the time that it was Wood who devised the plot. And of course, nobody believed him. But this letter corroborates Bow's claim. Bow, I believe, um, died in 2009. Um, apparently, his cousin, uh, or I should say uh, Wood, withheld his role in Malcolm X's assassination, this is according to his cousin, because he, quote, worried about what the NYPD and the FBI would do to him and his family if he told the dark secrets that he helped destroy black leaders and black power. This, uh, uh, Wood himself was also black. And um, he said uh, in his confession that the New York Police Department also tried to frame a group of the Black Panthers known as the Panther 21, they were ultimately acquitted. Well, they also, the FBI was also, I mean, they were all over Martin Luther King at yeah. the time of his death, all over him. Every single waking move that, or a, anything MLK did, they were surveilling him. They had eyes on him. No eyes on him at the time of his assassination. It's curious. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see if there is, um, if people start to file uh, FOIAs on this. Well, I don't we're going to get a lot of these things declassified um, as the FBI's ability to keep them um, under wraps expires um, in some in a few years, I believe, uh, specifically related to Martin Luther King, the recordings of his uh, alleged or. Uh, <laughs> Very well documented, we should say, uh, extramarital affairs, but also other information surrounding um, the FBI's, like, you know, there were, they reportedly tried to bribe Malcolm X and um, all of their involvement trying to destroy the Black Panthers. We're going to see so much more of this, and um, it shouldn't shock anybody. I mean, but at the same time, it seems totally out of character for J. Edgar Hoover to do something like this, right? <laughs> well, right? I mean, I, the, 
the it shouldn't shock people, but most people don't have this sense of of this type of history at all. I think the vast well, majority of people. Well, most white people, most white people. Right. I mean, I think that like the the issue too is just that there's so much propaganda about the FBI and cop shows, and then and, and the FBI is this beacon of like what was the movie Mississippi Burning? You know, it was really the FBI that helped uh liberate black people in the south like that was basically the latent premise there there's so much embedded propaganda in our country about the fbi which like it's still a nefarious organization but especially then especially then it ran rampant over civil rights and just had wide breath and completely tried to destroy the civil rights movement at every turn and that's how they should be viewed historically yeah, and it's not just history. Like you said, like if you think they're not still doing this shit, um Black Lives Matter leaders keep turning up dead under suspicious circumstances. Wonder what's going on there. Like this is an ongoing struggle and Black liberation poses a threat to the American system which is built on exploitation and white supremacy. So as long as people are struggling against it, the state is going to be, you know, doing what it can to put a lid on it. I mean, I, I think that's why it's, it's so important that, that um, these type of stories get amplified because, you know, there was an era in the seventies where this was, um, uh, there was an era in the seventies that, you know, I think people are far more sensitive to the church commission and, um, and, and people understanding, you know, so what was happening with the Cointel pro, and but that is now, you know, 50, 45, 40 years ago. Um, and I think um, there, like you say, there's been a lot of work done to sort of uh, sugarcoat the responsibility of these agencies in, um, in, in this type of stuff. And, you know, or portray them as as working alongside the civil rights leaders when it was the exact right. opposite. And it is the opposite today, as Jamie points out. Black Lives Matter and federal law enforcement and law enforcement in general, because they are just law enforcement. They're just on a federal stage. There's an acrimonious relationship between the two, and it should not be viewed and whitewashed in history. Because, like, then that, that, that you know what that does? That downplays the immense obstacles that black liberation leaders and civil rights activists had to go up against. They had to go up against the entire federal law enforcement apparatus. And it was not, it was not easy. It's still not. Yeah, it's still not. But I mean, now at least we have like people on the internet who talk more freely about this kind of stuff. Back then it was, it was under, uh, it it was a gaslighting operation where people, where they were being surveilled. They were being harassed. They were p- being murdered. And uh, everyone was told that it wasn't happening. And they were told it wasn't happening. And they just had to to trust, have the courage of their convictions um, to, to, to believe that what they were seeing was real. Yeah. Well, once again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but this is the purpose that law enforcement serves in our society. And this is why we need to take away their power, take away their toys, take away their funding and shrink them down till you can drown it in a bathtub. Because this is the purpose that it serves.